whether the jury is going to consider no. when they start to deliberate. I, I, Anahita, no. so let me go to you. No. Does not Midwin have a point here, or do you think maybe it didn't have the impact that it should have had on this jury? I think she makes a little bit of a correct point, and that is that, of course, the testimony of, of um, Trayvon Martin's mother is going to have an impact on those jurors. I don't care what side you're on. That's a mother who lost a child, and having her sit on the stand and listen to the last moments of her son's life on that tape, of course it's difficult. Of course it's going to impact those jurors. But, Joey, what was the prosecution thinking by putting the mother on before she put on that, that medical examiner? Uh -huh. I think the impact, whatever impact that testimony may have had on those jurors is now gone because those jurors are now left thinking about this medical examiner, Dr. Bao, and not the emotional testimony of Trayvon Martin's mother. Joey. And also well, a second hey, point. Frank will get to you, I promise. A second point. <laughs> All right. let, me, let me just address... <laughs> Go ahead, Let Anahita. me just address the second point made by uh, Midwin is that, yeah, we now have reasonable doubt. Again, the prosecution in their case in chief is building the defense case because they have... Now we've seen, okay, Trayvon's mom and brother saying that's Trayvon screaming on the 911 tape, of course. And then we have George Zimmerman's family members saying that it's George Zimmerman. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Reasonable doubt. And that's a victory for the defense. Joey. Gotcha. Cheryl Lee Ralph, is, is she right? Does Anahita have a point here? Listen. Back out to our lions then. <laughs> they're, they're chomping at the bit still. Now listen, Anahita, I'll start with you. Did the prosecution prove their case? All the evidence is in. You heard the arguments today from the totality of the evidence, Anahita. What do you say? Absolutely not, Joey. They have utterly failed to meet their burden of proof that this is a murder two case beyond a reasonable doubt. OK, so putting aside the fact that the prosecution essentially put on the defense case in their case in chief, aside from the fact that their witnesses one by one set forth George Zimmerman's defense, self-defense defense, I should say, the fact of the matter is they are unable to prove malice, ill will and spite. And, you know, don't take it from me. Don't take it from Mark O'Mara. Don't take it from George Zimmerman, who incidentally gave statement after statement that was consistent. Take it from the prosecution's key Without a lawyer, witnesses. Joey. Without the a police lawyer. investigators. Without a lawyer. Exactly. But let me ask you the this. The police investigators stated there was no malice, no ill will, no racial motivation here. There's there's no there's no way this meets the high burden of proof that hey, the state Joey, needs but to But at a criminal justice course, wouldn't he know that if they read him Miranda and he was an A student, wouldn't he say, hey, you know what? Maybe I need to get a lawyer. Huh? But you know, justice, when he when he was read his Miranda rights three times, he made four statements without an attorney present. And but Frank, let me ask you that means that, that no. against I, I want to ask Midwin that a question works against a defendant. Uh, 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 just one second. Midwin, I want to get to okay. you because on that point, it really gave that they interview to Sean Hill. A liar doesn't make you guilty never, of second degree murder. No, but if you lie about that, what else guilty. are you lying about? I this love this because are, all that this not. proves is doubt, doubt, doubt. And all we're and looking for is a wants. little bit doubt, of doubt. 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 It proves Can that if he lies about room? that, what else is he lying about? Because he's the only exactly. one who's going to tell us what happened that night. But so if he's lying you don't have about to take whether or not George he had ever heard him stand mouth. your ground, what else is but he here's lying the about? Thing. And that's the problem. But here's the Joey, thing. You don't have to it. take it from How George Zimmerman's state? mouth. Hold on, on let me second. make this point. Order in the court. Order in the court. <laughs> Anahita, getting to the you state? on the issue. Let me ask you, Frank, I'll get right to you, but I sure. want to ask okay, Anahita sure. this question. What about sure. all those inconsistencies? Do you think, Anahita, that the inconsistencies are relevant, that they're material, that they're significant? Don't they assist the prosecution and hurt the defense? That's an excellent point, Joey. And of course, there are going to be minor inconsistencies They're anytime minor. anybody tells a story more than one time. We had the They're police major. investigation. We'll get to you, Cheryl. The state's <laughs> witnesses. The state's witnesses said they believe George Zimmer Zimmerman to be truthful. And look, I was trying to say this earlier that, and Joey, you know this, as defense attorneys, we do not want our clients to talk to the police. And it has nothing to do with guilt or innocence. It has nothing to do with lying or telling the truth. But the fact of the matter is, when you're telling a story more than once, there are going to be inconsistencies. But here, on every I material point, that. George Zimmerman was entirely consistent. And again, don't take it from me. Take it from the state's star witnesses, the police investigators who interviewed him repeatedly, who tried to trip him up, who tried to use every technique to get him to lie, to get him to, to show that he's not telling the truth. It didn't work. 
They believed so, him. And I think so the Cheryl, forensics support his statements. Not surprisingly, Cheryl disagrees with you, Anahita. Why do you disagree, <laughs> Cheryl? I, do you I, not I, think I that those incons... Mm -hmm. When I want to start with you, Anahita said before, if you recall, that the impact of the testimony of Trayvon's mom was lost with this medical examiner who set off this flood of controversy. Was this a good move for the prosecution, Midwin? Yeah, uh, I actually agree with her on that point. She's right. Why end your case with one of the worst witnesses I have ever seen? I mean, he was just a exactly. hot mess. Why did I, I, they? Exactly. <laughs> I, I well, haven't Joey, seen a worse you, you have to question I like that man. strategy. Uh, well, hold on. Wait, Cheryl, I, you like that man? Can we, can I, we hear I more? I am the only you? one. Oh, I want to go to Frank on this point. Joey, the reason I want to go to Frank, no let me problem. just say this. This expert, though, was, it seemed to me, couldn't remember things, had his notes in front of him, uh, hey, Joe, was inconsistent, Joe. was changing opinions. Frank, what say you? Wow. Joe, I haven't seen a worse performance as Dennis Fung at the OJ trial. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I was like uh, in awe that they actually put a paid. Joey, gets it Joey right. can I chime Don't in? Don't be unkind, oh, Mr. Oh, Tabby. It, it is away. not nice when you're unkind. Joey, it doesn't look, look good on you. Joey, take, take this is not the same Anita. individual. This is the same individual, this medical examiner, who incidentally is perhaps the worst expert witness I've ever seen in my career. He's the same guy wow. who goes on the stand and says, I change my opinion you. every hour. I change my opinion every hour. So let's bad. forget the fact. Let's forget the fact that he he was completely not prepared, which I blame the prosecution for failing to yes. prep him a little bit better. He was combative. He was inconsistent in his statements. He was evasive. But Joey, he brought his own personal notes and was reading them while he was testifying on the stand. I mean, that he did you not show to the prosecution. Sure he got it exactly. right. That you did to not make sure show he got it right and communicated it he correctly. Needed to have he also shown said that, to, that but it he changed work that his way. You need to have shown that to the based upon what was bought to him in the morgue. He but said that he changed his mind. Let the me go case. to Midwin. Let it, me go to Midwin because was, I want to ask the following entirely question. Entirely ineffective. And, and, it, with regard to Anahita's point, Midwin. Now listen, this this is a medical professional. The likes of which, this this is a medical professional. The likes of which I have not seen in a while. But I guess the critical trials, issue Joey, becomes Midwin. <laughs> can He's Midwin, in can 20 the trials. prosecution overcome this particular Joe. evidence? I, I couldn't hear you, Joey. There are like five people talking at the same time. Could you just can the prosecution? That, can the absolutely Midwin? Can the pro what in terms of his self you. defense? And, the those, defense and, and that's what matters. Got him on that's what matters. That. I mean, the, the defense, defense spent, him yes. the defense spent the, all the day spending time state, and trying you guys, to make Dr. Bow. You guys can go on like forever. Cool, but... Next, much more from the Lions then. And we're talking. These witnesses end up canceling each other out. Let's go right back. Yep, you guessed it, to the Lions then. Anahita, I want to start with you. We heard, of course, from Trayvon's mom, very credible, very dignified, very believable. Then, of course, we hear from who we just heard, his uncle. And he seemed to be, of course, believable. So I have a two-part question, Anahita. A, will they cancel each other out? And B, what will the defense do to keep buttressing that story that it was George Zimmerman and not Trayvon? Well, of course the witnesses are going to cancel each other out. I mentioned this earlier today. The fact of the matter is that anyone that listens to that tape, even us sitting on this panel, can hear it and disagree as to who we think it is. And at the end of the day, that is built in reasonable doubt. And who does that benefit? That benefits the defense. And we already saw in this case the judge made a devastating uh, ruling um, to the prosecution by holding that the prosecution could not introduce their expert, their voice recognition expert, to opine that it was Trayvon Martin screaming. So that basically leaves it up to the jurors to listen to these lay witnesses, the family members of Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman. And they're going to, of course, take that tape into the jury room, listen to that tape again and decide for themselves. And I think it's going to be very difficult to get six people to agree who they believe that voice is, because we've seen over and over just us, people in the public can't agree. And so when there's doubt, that benefits the defense. Now, Midwin, though, of course, the jury is comprised of women. Let's go right back to the lines then. 
Lions Den members, I got to ask you, Anahit, I want to go straight to you on this point. You knew he was going to do the judgment of acquittal. You knew, well, right. you sort of assumed the judge would deny it and leave it to the jury. What does the defense have to do now, Anahita, to drive home the point that it was self-defense and not murder too? Well, of course, I knew the defense was going to bring this motion, and I assumed that the judge was going to deny it, but they had to do that. That's part of what they have to do as defense attorneys. Sure. And quite frankly, I think the job of the defense just became a lot easier because, like I've said over and over today, the prosecution essentially put on George Zimmerman's defense in their case in chief. They laid out George Zimmerman's self-defense claim. Look at the testimony of John Good. Okay, John Good was one of the neighbors that walked out, and he had the best vantage point of the altercation that took place between George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin. And what did he say? And again, this is a prosecution star witness. He said that he saw Trayvon Martin on top of George Zimmerman punching him MMA style and that it was George Zimmerman that was likely the one screaming out for help. That proves the self-defense claim right there. And again, it's the, the burden is on the prosecution to rebut mm -hmm. The claim of self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt. They haven't now, even come close to doing that, as Omara stated right there in his argument for his motion for acquittal. So I think the defense case is going to be relatively short. They're going to probably put on a couple of witness. George Zimmerman definitely is not going to take the stand at this point. And I think it should go to the jury probably by the end of the week. You know, I think it's a close question. On the issue, many people bring up the issue of John Good. Why was he called? Strong Got opening. It. Anahita, what say you? I, I say a big fat F, not because I don't think they did a good job. They've been professional through and through, but because the facts are not there for them to Cheryl, prove a second-degree murder case. I really want to give them an